Hello everyone, I'm Carissa and today I wanted to show you our brand new fall inspired color by number coloring kit. It is called Pie and the Sky and it is a delicious warm apple pie with some gorgeous fall trees and a bluebird in the window with some sunflower curtains. So all the cozy things to get you in the mood for this upcoming season. I love autumn so this this kit is just like so fun for me. Um, it is for all ages or skill levels. You can do this with your friend. You can do this by yourself as a fun project. Um, as the weather cools down too, it'll be so nice to sit at home and just do with this color by number that is so easy. So this is a PDF that you can download and print off at home. It is only $4.99 and within that PDF you will receive um, instructions on how to bloom which is our um, color by number system utilizing the Grisaille Velvet Touch colored pencils. If you do not have our brand of pencils, no worries, you can color match with any brand, but if you do have our pencils it's just going to save you that time and effort with color matching because here we have a color map showing all of our color suggestions. These are blooms right here and that's going to help you so much it's going to bring your coloring page to life and we have the color map so you can see exactly where to put those colors so it is very simple and easy to follow and the best part about it is this is your coloring page and there's no numbers a color by number with color pencils with no numbers showing through. Your numbers are on the color map so you get this seamless um, line art that when you are finished there's no numbers and it will look so beautiful as a piece on your wall and you didn't have to cover any numbers because if you're a color pencil artist and you've tried to do other kits before you know that it is just like really hard to find any color by numbers that actually don't have the numbers on them and look as cute as this. I mean, I just think this piece is adorable. So here's the finished example and I'm going to show you a little bit about how to do this piece today utilizing our bloom system. So I hope that you enjoy it as much as me and we're just going to have really a lot of fun um, doing this together. So let's go ahead and get into the coloring. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to begin with the pie and I'm going to show you real quick how to bloom. So here is the chart that you can either print out or you can just view the PDF and get the instructions before you get started. And I'm referring to our color map here so we can see that the pie is Y05, which is here, jasmine, ochre, and raw umber. So I have these pencils ready to be used. They're nice and sharp for me. So a bloom is when you have a highlight, mid-tone, and shadow color that when combined creates a really beautiful blended color. And these are combinations that you can refer to. It makes your projects easier because you could just pick a combination and you will just really love the results. It adds more dimension to your coloring pages and it saves time picking colors. So. This is my highlight color, this is my mid-tone, and this is my shadow. So I'm going to start here and just do a light layer. And I'm just going to go ahead and cover the whole area. Just picking one small area and I'm laying down the base lightly and then the mid-tone lightly on the outside and the shadow color I'm also applying just very gentle pressure and going along the outside leaving the middle the lightest. So it goes highlight, mid-tone, shadow, then mid-tone and highlight again. So once I've used my shadow color going back over with the mid-tone and then once you add your highlight, it blends it all together, creating a beautiful effortless blend. So you can either do it one at a time, like so, or you can cover larger areas. 
and do it all at once like this. And it really helps to have all three colors in your hand so you can switch out quickly. And it might take a minute to get used to the technique, but once you have it down, it is so quick and easy and you can fill a large area at a time and it limits you to three colors, which is good because you wouldn't want to use more than three colors on this pie. These colors are perfect for this. So using my shadow color, going along the outline, you pretty much always want to stay along the outline for the shadows. From the midtone. So I'm going to repeat the same technique for the rest of the crust. And I'm starting to smell this pie through the paper. The further I get along with it, the more it seems to come to life. This is a great gift to give to somebody, especially if you know somebody that makes a really good apple pie. This is a really sweet fall gift. So for the crust, I am going to shade on the edges of these lines here and I'm going to go along the whole thing so going right along these lines to in a shade right here Just like this and then don't forget to do it along the top make this lighter or darker according to your preference. I always tend to go a little dark so you don't have to follow me exactly because sometimes I'll push a little hard on the shadows um, but the great thing is you can always take a white pencil and just lightly go over any areas that you think need lightening up That's really all it takes is, is a little bit of white. Not too much because you don't want to change the colors, but just, just give a little bit of a highlight in certain areas. Or maybe I should lighten these parts up. It, it's very adjustable. If you leave some tooth to the paper, especially, you can you can layer on with a, a other colors that you want and incorporate other colors but it looks pretty good and just keep in mind this doesn't have to be perfect as long as you're having fun and it's relaxing like don't be stressed out about how it looks because you can see like you know I've got some some kind of not filled in parts all the way, but I'm not worried about it because when I go over with another layer, it's going to look really good. So I'm just kind of like scribbling along the edge very lightly. And then with those lines, going over the lines a little bit. And there 
there's a little area right there to fill in. But I'm just going along the edge really lightly. And now for the other side, going along the top here. Nothing fancy. Now we're gonna go back over it again and uh, just with that, this on top looks so much better. And if you always um, struggle with picking colors or trying to figure out what color to, what different colors to pick for things, this just takes that guesswork out, which is so nice because you really don't have to think about it. You just color and you will have such great results every time. Because the three colors, you don't really need more and you don't want to do less. Like it's just, it's the perfect amount for creating, you know, a semi-realistic pie. We're not going for realism, but it doesn't look, it, it has some dimension, it has shading, which really gives it some, some character and helps bring it to life a little bit. And then I kind of did the base for the bottom. So I'm just going to shade underneath right here. And I'm going to have it a little bit darker on the edges just so it kind of pops out of this little pan. And then darker underneath the crust. So we're gonna take the shadow color. I'm gonna do the same thing. And I'm gonna get along this edge here just a little bit. And we're going over with the mid-tone again. We're just lightly covering everything. And leaving the middle the lightest. And then you can go back and get any spots you may have missed before. But you do not have to be perfect about this. Because look how good that looks. It's so much better than if I, and it was so much quicker than if I would have tried to think about what colors I wanted and, you know, picking too many colors can be overwhelming as well. So you don't want to overpick and be overwhelmed with your color choices either. So this limits you, but it also, it, it helps a lot. It helps by limiting you to three colors only for each subject and you can always add in more if you'd like, but just to have that base is really nice. So I'm gathering my, my grays right here, because we're gonna do with the pan next. I'm gonna go ahead and just sharpen a little bit, especially to get the white clean. I like to sharpen my white pencil, to keep it nice and sharp and clean. I like my white really sharp, so. Okay, I am going to use white as a base and it's, I think I'm gonna go for kind of like a shiny, shiny tin look. So I'm just gonna apply white as the base around here. 
So I'm not gonna fill it all in with gray because I want to have a shiny tin look to it. This does not have to be perfect at all. It's just gonna help those grays to blend. So, go around here, start laying some gray down, and just leaving some areas for shine. Like leaving it white in between, it's gonna create a shine effect. But along the edges, I always like to shade more along the edges because it just makes everything more three-dimensional. Makes everything pop a bit more. So along the edges of everything, I really like to apply more pressure. And then go along this edge here. And it's just so effortless. You don't have to be perfect and neat for it to look good. And I am not a neat artist. <laughs> so I really like that I can be kind of sloppy and it just doesn't even matter. It still looks pretty good. Even if I am not being perfect with my pencil marks, I'm just kind of just laying it on there, scribbling. Kind of have some lines showing through if you want to, the shiny parts. You can go as intense with this as you like, but I think that looks pretty good. So, with my lighter shade of gray, and gotta remember to keep these in my hand so it makes it even quicker to grab. So, again, I'm shading the edge here. And along the edge. And along these lines too. Makes a big difference. And that darker shade and doing the same thing on top. That looks pretty good for the pan. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do this little bluebird. So I'm gonna look at our color guide and that is BO9. BO9 is this bloom here. We need white powder and azure. So I'm gonna start out my base with white. Then I'm gonna do some powder. I'm gonna leave this little underneath the bird white, to the belly of the bird, the lightest. This is one of my favorite shades. It's so beautiful, this powder color. I'm going a little bit darker when I get near these lines. 
just so it gives us a point in which we can shade some more. Let's go ahead and lay this across all the wings here. And then I'm going to use Azure and go around darker on these lines. <clears throat> Get right up on the eye. So cute. I love this little bird. And of course you can do different colors than what is suggested. So if you want to do a little red bird or you want to do more of a cardinal, you can of course incorporate that into this piece. So use some different colors. You can of course make your own blooms. And if you do make you create your own blooms, your own color combinations, you can join our Facebook group and share those with everyone and that could be very helpful to fellow artists that are looking to improve their coloring and come up with new color combinations for different things. And please let us know if you enjoy this kit, what you would like to see next. I really love that there is an animal in this one because I love drawing animals. So that little touch is really nice and it gives that extra pop of color. Add some more white on top. Do a little more shading towards the bottom of the feathers. And then I'm going to just take some gray, just a little bit of gray, just shade under the wing and on the underside of that belly. This gives that little extra bit of shading. And let's just take Jasmine, do the beak. And look how easy that was. We've got this perfect, adorable little bird. Maybe just a little more shading around the beak. And I like to go right under the eye as well. I think that looks really cute. I like that. So now I'm going to do a little bit of the sky. So I'm going to use 42 powder, the same color we used for the bird. And I'm just going to do a light layer of powder. And then we're going to add a touch of gray and blend those two colors together to kind of have more of a muted sky and that'll just make the colors on the trees pop more. I'm just going to show you how I do this real quick. So I'm just doing a really light layer and just back and forth movements. 
trying to make everything even here. And it'll make it more easy to apply the gray on top if, if our base is nice and even. So once we have this kind of filled in, get her all these leaves. I'm just gonna take my gray pencil, 71, and apply this on top of that powder shade. We're gonna blend these two together. Just creating more of a deeper, moodier looking sky. And I'm just doing this really light because we want these to blend nicely. Just really light pressure on a sharp pencil. And we'll just do two layers of this. in between the trees, under the cloud, and just covering it up all evenly. Now for this stem, I'm just going to use For the stem, I'm just gonna use a little bit of brown. I'm gonna use a little bit of brown and raw umber for the stem. And then this Geo one for the leaf, so for this, it's honey, leaf, and kelp. All right, so we have honey, leaf, and kelp. So I'm going to to a very quick leaf here. Just a nice quick little colorful leaf. And now I think a really fun one to do could be this pink tree. So 003 is blush, vermilion, and carrot. So this tree looks like, so this tree here looks like a lot of fun. That is 003, which is blush, vermilion, and carrot. So I have blush. It's so different to do a pink tree, but it sure looks pretty. So closer to the trunk, I'm gonna do a little more shading. And then on the outside, I'm gonna do a little bit more with the 
vermilion. So I'm going to take carrot, go along the edge, and we're getting this really beautiful pinky orange shade that you would never think to put these three together for for a fall tree. So that's what's great about these blooms is they give you some new ideas to try, some different color combinations that you may not have thought of. to put some more pressure on the edge here so that those leaves towards the edges are really vibrant. Look how pretty that is. It's beautiful. Beautiful tree. So now for the trunk, which is So it says the trunk is just 18, which is raw umber. So I'm just gonna quickly fill that in with raw umber. And they've got a beautiful fall tree. I love that. So then this front leaf, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna take the same bloom and we're just going to do this leaf here the same technique. You can see it works on everything. It's so fun once you get the hang of it. I really love this shade Vermilion. It's like this orangey Pink, kind of like coral color. You just wouldn't think that coral would really be beautiful fall color. But once you see it against the other orange shades, it looks very nice. This carrot shade pulls it all together. Filling it towards the edges and blending it out with vermilion again. And then blush. And look at what a quick and easy leaf that was. And then just filling in the stem with raw umber. And it matches this tree perfectly. It matches this tree perfectly. So I think that's really beautiful. Happy with that. And then I think we'll do a little bit of the grass. So honey, leaf, and kelp. And I'm just gonna show you these colors together. Just 
going very light because we don't want this to be too vibrant over here. I love that there's some orangey yellow tint to this grass because usually in the fall your grass gets a little faded. So this is really fun to color. So I'm going to leave like the edges of the grass at the top pretty light. I'm going to take kelp. Like I was saying, I really like to do the edges darker. Kind of draws your focus towards the center of, of the image. Going back with the honey. So the tips of the grass. I might do it one more time, just a little bit here. You can apply lots of layers on this paper which is Stonehenge white paper. So when you are printing this image, you can take out your printer paper, out of your printer and replace it with a really nice quality art paper. And that's gonna really improve your results with coloring. And if you're used to coloring in a coloring book, you will be, you'll be so impressed with how it feels to color with really good artist paper and especially doing this technique it just makes it like so fun you can just keep layering and you just get a really much better look than on regular copy paper so i would give that a try and then you can do the same thing for these leaves here Quick, easy, matches this grass. Oh, so beautiful. I love it. And once it's filled in, you'll just see just how beautiful it will be. So I think we'll do one more. I'm gonna do a sunflower, maybe over here. So for the sunflower, it is Y07, which is raw umber, terracotta, and brown for the center and Y01, lemon, sunburst, and carrot for the petals. So, lemon, sunburst, and carrot. I love, we did this one here. I love sunflowers. They're one of my favorites. They're so pretty and I mean, they just look good for any season. But of course fall is kind of when they come around and really start to pop up everywhere and just love it. I'm just going on the outside of all these petals, the darker shades, leaving the center of the petal lightest. Just like before.
And then for the center, raw umber, terracotta, and brown. And look how quick and easy this is gonna be. Pull it in. It's really nice reddish brown shade. It's perfect. Dark brown. Tone. And lightest color. So easy. So easy and fast. And just because it's so easy and fast, let's just do one more. We're gonna take the same yellows that I was just using. Lemon, sunburst, and carrot. And we'll do these trees right here. You can do these trees whatever, you know, put these colors wherever you want. You can switch it up. Pretty when you see them together. Carrot. And then again, I'm gonna put some of that over the lines. Well, I love what we have right here and I hope that you enjoyed this little uh, example of me using the balloon technique and I hope that you have so much fun doing your piece and don't forget to share your results with us on Facebook at Grisai Art. Check out our group there and visit our website at grisai.com for more kits like this and please leave in the comments your favorite fall activity and another kit that you would like to see in the future. So I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.